Bionics, the enhancement of the human body with cutting edge technology, merging man with machine. Once science fiction fantasy, it's now a global industry. In Europe's most far-flung nation, a bionic revolution is underway. It's as new as it gets, an extension of the human nervous system. They're attempting to build powerful machines that can be integrated into the human body, controlled by just thought alone. They could change all our lives. We're getting closer and closer, and now it's just a matter of time. One woman at the forefront of the growing bionics industry is Hilda Einersdottir. As a young girl growing up, um, dolls and Barbies were not really my thing, but Lego was being able to play around with these robotic arms and, and uh, kind of understand how they function. Hilda's dream is to engineer a bionic system that works as intuitively as her own body. Working with the human body on a sort of biomechanical level it makes you realize how perfectly created it is. I mean, we have the perfect sample of where we want to get to in terms of function, that's the human leg. We're quite far along, but it's as part of my job to push the boundaries further and further. Hilda is part of the team at Osser, one of the many companies involved in this emerging industry. Osser has developed some of the most sophisticated prosthetic limbs on the planet. They are now taking the technology a step further by integrating modern electronics into the human body. They are building the world's first brain-controlled bionic leg, joint by joint. I think you've got the nerve. Okay. 48 year old Gummy lost his lower leg over a decade ago. Last year, he agreed to take part in an experiment. Gummy had sensors surgically inserted into his stump to link his central nervous system to a robotic ankle. Our subconscious brain controls movement by sending signals to the appropriate muscles. Gummy's implants convert those signals into electrical impulses that then move his bionic foot. Just cool. <laughs> it's the only thing I can describe with it. It's just amazing feeling. All of a sudden you just sit here and you can go, mm, and you can do this and you can see your ankle move. Just like this one, I can move this one and I can move this one. Just thinking about it. <laughs> I know it's, it's strange. Sometimes I even forget I have a prosthetic leg. The team are now trying to combine the brain control technology with their latest innovation, a robotic knee joint with as much turning power as a Harley Davidson. So it's going to take us about, what, 10 minutes more or? A little bit longer, maybe. Yeah, maybe a little bit longer. Okay. Engineer David Jonsson has been working on the power knee for the last five years. Yeah, it's probably like a racing car of the prosthetic world. It does give you the power. It compensates for the muscles that you've already lost. So standing up from a chair instead of having to do it on your on your sound side, you can do it on both knees or both legs. David is the ultimate bionic engineer. Being an engineer on your own body gives you a different perspective than other engineers. Being able to work on my own leg, trying to improve it and make it do the things that I feel it should do, it's extremely exciting. Our knees are the most hard-working joints in our bodies, essential to everyday activities like walking, running, sitting and standing. Creating a fully functioning knee joint 
is crucial to the dream of building a perfectly lifelike bionic leg. If you had the brain connected to the prosthesis, you think, now I want the knee to start walking upstairs, and they would just do it for you, just intuitively, as you would if you didn't have the amputation. Faced with such a tough engineering challenge, Hilda has carefully selected the perfect candidate to trial the brain-controlled bionic knee. And along with her colleague, she's heading deep into the Icelandic countryside to visit him. Well, <laughs> I think with David, you always hope that the, he hasn't completely smashed in his leg. I guess. Yes. Farmer David Ingverson has a physical job that will push their engineering to the limit. Last year, he had brain-controlled sensors surgically inserted into his leg. Hi. 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 Good to see you. Thank you. The foot was on the table, and there was no wiring, nothing. Just some sensors on me and some, some, some stuff, and, and they okay, now move the foot, and uh, I did, and, <laughs> and that was amazing. The feeling was uh, yeah, really, really special. I almost get a tear in my eyes. <laughs> but I'm from Iceland, so we never get a tear in my eyes. Yeah? All right, I'm good when you are. David's sensors will soon be linked to the new bionic knee. And then we speed it up? And he's coming for a fitting in a few days' time. It's really great to be asked to, to be the first person to do this, because uh, I think that's going to be a, a breakthrough. <laughs> Okay. Yep. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> Modern prosthetics are levelling the playing field for amputees. The team at Osser believe their bionic technology also has the potential to reduce the impact of ageing and help us all stay mobile for longer. People are becoming more independent as they grow older, and so people that were maybe sitting on a sofa 20 years ago, they would now be going skiing. So the need for technology to, to assist and, and allow that is, is obvious. 92-year-old Gunnar is the team's oldest test user. Six months ago, he was fitted with his first bionic leg. It's such a valuable thing for us to be able to work with him on, on new products. And because he gives us feedback for that kind of age group uh, that you know we, we so need to cater for. This shows that you have walked three to four kilometers an hour. Pretty good for your age. You think so? Yes, I think so. <laughs> That's about the same speed as me and Hilda walk. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> as our elderly population grows, so will the global bionics industry, extending the life of aging limbs and restoring the function of damaged ones. In the next five years alone, the industry is expected to exceed 20 billion US dollars in sales. It makes all the difference, all the difference. Keeps you alive. For Hilda and the team, it's crunch time. Today we're meeting David the farmer again in order to prepare for when we can connect uh, his brain-controlled uh, device to the powered prosthesis. So that's a really uh, ex exciting. I'm feeling exciting, so <laughs> hopefully it's going to work well. Hi. 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 Good to see you again. It's as new as it gets <laughs> to make a machine work as intimately with, uh, with, uh, with the amputee as, as possible, giving the user the, the total control over the power provided by the power knee is, is something that they have never seen before.
We do as, as much preparation as possible, but you never really know if it's really going to work or, or, or not. Okay. So maybe, yeah. Yeah? Or like fix your setting, so we might want to just start off slowly. How does that feel when you're standing up? Do you feel the power? Yeah, I, I really feel the power, and it's really helped you to get out of the chair. Okay, and not too much. It's not. No, 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 no not too, too much. much. It's just fine. Okay. So uh, let's see if we get on. Okay. You okay with this? It's quite high and quite steep. Trust me. Oh, me. Trust me. I think it's really good. I want to go much faster, Tom. Right. <laughs> <laughs> to see him operate the, the system and, and make use of it, being the only one in the world doing so, is, is, is really brilliant. It's good. We were just scratching the surface of what this technology can do. So I'm convinced that in the next 15 years, we're going to see a giant leap.